Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Recently we tested various ARP and non-ARP head studs and head bolts from Chevy LS engines to see which was best and perhaps needless to say that left us with a lot of less than happy threaded cast iron billets. So today we're going to find out does thread repair using thread inserts work? How do they compare to the original thread strength? What type or brand is best? Does spending more money make for stronger repairs? Some surprising results on this one, definitely not what we expected. And of course, just because we can, the backyard mechanics sort of oh shit fix JB Weld. Will drilling out your abused threads, packing it full of this, then tapping that with threads leave you with something, anything close to passable? Let's throw 12 metric tons at it and find out in our series that might as well be called Dial Indicator Death Row. So let's hop in. What you're looking at is just a $10 set of metric 11 millimeter size permacoil brand threaded inserts in 304 stainless. And this is an M11 stud and ARP grade L19. We bought extra just in case one of these kicked the bucket here. Perhaps the strongest bolt slash stud on the planet as far as we can tell and closing in on twice the tensile strength of a grade eight bolt with 260,000 PSI of rating. So expensive and fancy, you're not supposed to touch it with your hands, so easy does it with stuff like this. The Permacoil brand's motto is the other name in thread repair, so let's instead start with the name in thread repair to see what that baseline level of performance is, and because the type we bought comes with a couple more tools, it's the Helicoil brand. This brand's synonymous with this type of spiral wire stainless thread insert repair. This was $45, which ain't bad, though all the pieces do appear to be made in China. That's not usually a death sentence on this channel. Lots of PRC tools do quite well for us, but threading tools, taps in general, for me, just personal experience here, I haven't seen a lot of the best stuff come out of there yet. Though this is Helicoil, not eBay, it's a name brand. It does come with an installer tool and this plastic hex like, I don't know, alignment tool. No drill bit included, but it calls for 29 64 for our application on the packaging. Simple enough, first you drill out the potentially buggered threads with that 29 64 drill bit. Then you use the included tap to tap new threads, making sure at least 5 eighths of an inch is fully formed threads for that 5 eighths long insert. The length of insert all of our brands will be using today. Often you'd use tapping oil for this, but on cast iron it's not required and often creates its own particular dusty like chips better this way. Then you have this weird hex guide thing to contend with. To start off first, that means we have to apply our high strength Loctite in the hole rather than on the insert. Loctite's not always required, but is allowed by all these brands, so we're choosing to do for all of them today. Allowing them to cure overnight as our JB Weld that we're later using dries. The plastic hex guide is just sort of weird. I mean, it works, but the whole process I think even works better with just the threaded installer by itself. You want to install these just below the surface, about maybe one thread down. Then you break off the tail that helped you install the thing. Pretty much anything works for this step, I find. Then wipe away any excess Loctite from the internal threads. You're pretty much set. Let's have at it. Our L19 ARP stud started being measured for stretched at its torque state of 3600 PSI. In case any of these let go before that level, we're measuring movement from near zero PSI or about 300 here. But we can see where these are at that 3600 PSI and sort of do the math coming up on our leaderboard to compare against the stud just in original cast iron. With the dial indicator mounted just behind the stud here to measure basically what would be the cylinder head lift from this increasing force, our first stage is increasing things up to 6500 PSI or about 18,000 pounds the limit of the, our hydraulic hand pump here. So on this helicoil insert we're seeing about 43 thousandths of stretch and movement. And when returned to zero for our next let's try to kill it phase, it returned to two thousandths of stretch or movement from where it was before. I think that's pretty good. Let's see the uh, let's kill it phase. Yowza, about 8400 PSI and things really let go quite violently, certainly KOing our dial indicator. Sorry little buddy, you died in the name of science. And taking out a lot of cast iron with it in a volcano-like eruption. You can see that that now dormant volcano looks like this here. Lots of material missing 
For comparison's sake, that 43 thousandths that this one saw was starting from near nothing on the PSI scale, but when looking at its stretch between 3600 PSI, like down here, and the 6500 it saw, it's seeing the same Young's modulus curve of the L19 stud, meaning 19 thousandths here versus 18 thousandths here, which is negligible. But that 9500 we measured with the stud just in the cast iron, never seeing its ultimate tinsel strength, that was turned into 8438 with the helicoil before it took to the skies. But as you'll see here, that's still more peak than we got out of a grade 8 bolt. We don't have a test set up with this one to exactly confirm that way, but the data implies that the insert would be stronger than a grade 8 bolt. We'll have to see if these other coil-like inserts are more of the same. Starting with V-Coil, this is a set that seemed well-priced at $38 shipped from Amazon UK. For that price and made in Europe, it seemed like it was worth a shot. This set comes with its own drill bit, which is a unique 11.4 millimeter size. As a matter of fact, per Helicoil's website, the perfect size for that kit that we just used would have been 11.3 millimeters, but that's certainly not a common size like the 2964s that it tells you to use, and would add around $20 if you were to purchase that yourself. The V-Coil set comes with a made-in-Germany high-speed steel tap, which is... that's pretty crazy. A German-made high-speed steel tap alone can cost near what this set does shipped. It also comes with an installer and punch tools. Same steps as before, drill out the old threads, use the tap to make new ones. This one felt a little bit more smoother on the hard cast iron, but that's subjective of course. Then use the installer to thread it in. Again, we use red Loctite. Then use the included punch to snap off the tang bit. You'll want to clean off any excess Loctite and use a blowgun to blow out the tang. A magnet won't work for this 304 stainless. The V-coil performs well in our first test, staying below the helicoil line, which means less stretch and movement, which is good, and particularly at the end, spreading apart with 39 thousandths down from the 43 of the helicoil, though that's not really night and day here. Let's give her the max beans. So the V-coil sees a whole lot of stretch in the process, up to 63 thousandths before accidentally moving the indicator base here, sorry. But maxing out this air hydraulic pump, no failure to be seen. Up to 9,330 PSI, that's 25,800 pounds plus since we weren't able to make it go boom. That compares pretty closely to the just the bolt in cast iron down here, basically same Z's. that's good stuff. These sort of inserts advertise being as strong or stronger than the original threads, but just looking at them, that always seems a bit of a stretch to me. In this case, up to L19 head stud levels of bolt tension, which is probably as serious as it gets for any given thread size. That's top stuff. Permacoil next before we head over to some other types of inserts. Permacoil is that other name in thread repair. We decided to slum it on price point and just try to get by with a $10 purchase to do the same task. Permacoil also makes kits too, like Helicoil, which can sometimes be found cheaper. But if we just wanted to use the suggested size drill bit we already had, and a tap from maybe one of the other kits, come up with our own installer tool. Now, the drill bit that came with the V-coil we just tested was a custom, sort of appropriately sized for the tap it came with drill bit. Perhaps that was giving it an advantage, and we want to know that. So, using our own 2964 drill bit again here, like on the Helicoil, it might give us some info on that relationship. Most of these things use a specialty thread size tap, so you're not gonna have one of those, at least likely not, but it would be good to know if you bought a helicoil kit, would adding additional inserts for less coin do the trick too, hence these permacoils. Believe it or not, just some micro needle nose pliers are not only easy enough to use, they were probably the favorite around the shop when installing these inserts today, they work a treat. And nothing fancy needed to knock that tail off either, just use anything. So, short story even shorter, in the first test the permacoil does very similarly to the helicoil and v-coil inserts, and this is it taken to over 9,000. So the permacoil, again maxing out our hydraulics, which sounds like quite a testing limitation, 
but was really only a limitation on studs that were not the spendy L19 type, we saw quite our fair share of other, even ARP hardware, snapping like twigs while under this load. The Permacoil, one of the most budget options we've seen, saw the highest PSI so far, just at the hydraulic pump's limit and the least amount of stretch getting there. The V-Coil also returned to about six thousandths when all was said and done, when the hydraulics read zero, and the Permacoil four to five thousandths near human hair thickness of permanent movement. That's some crazy stuff, pretty impressed with inserts right about now. Rumor has it though, if you're serious about inserts and you want it done the right way, Time cert is the way to go. At around three times the price though, you might just be convinced by price alone that this is the case. Though perhaps for good reason, a time cert kit comes with a lot. And all those pieces as bespoke design little tools that are specific to each set and perform one separate little function. So just looking at the price versus what's included, it's sort of understandable. These use solid inserts, which have an external and internal thread pitch that are synchronized, timed together. <laughs> That's where the name comes from. The bottom few threads are underformed and get swaged in the hole by the installation tool. Maybe it's my reloading years coming through, but I can't think of a better term for that process than swaged. The threads are formed and in effect cinch up against the threaded hole, making for a tight bond. You use these with the included drill per usual. Then you use this counter bore cutter that has a stopper so you can feel when it's deep enough. Works pretty simply. I don't think it would be that much more difficult with the hand drill. The counter bore allows you to install the insert with its top lip flush or just under flush with the material. Then you tap the hole and you thread in the insert, which is pretty loose at this point and can be done by hand or with the install tool as they probably intend. Their install tool is rather unique and has these eccentric cuts on it and it gets some oil first and finishes the threads in the insert, leaving a solid insert that you can thread things in and out of. You can definitely feel it snug up and start to work at the bottom of the insert. The time cert shows you some pretty minor stretch all said and done, but ultimately similar like the others to the L19's bolt strength between that 3600 and 6500 PSI. Here's the time cert once things are really ramped up. This is just hard to believe. I mean, that was a lot of pressure, but still. Popped right up. It almost looks to me like the insert itself kind of severed in half. I'm not sure if you can see that. But like the two parts separated, it was very difficult to unscrew the stud. So the time cert 7,333 and the only break from that day that didn't bring a lot of cast iron with it. Spending this much and this many steps and cool tooling you would sort of expect it to just beat the pants off everything else, which is just a reminder why it's a good thing we have setups like this one that just spit out the numbers that don't evolve a lot of opinion. This still beats a great 8 bolt, keep that in mind, but just sort of just beats it on the edge there. Our next insert is the locking type. No metric M11 ones anywhere that we could find, so we'll be comparing it to the grade eight results from down here when using a 716-20 thread, pretty dang close in minor thread diameter there. On this one, a rather large hole is required, needing to use a 1732nds drill bit here, which is over half inch, so not super common from sets. It also limits where you can use this type of insert given that hole size needed but it does use standard tap thread pitches, which means you might already have the tap you need. This one took 5 8 11, still pretty big and required our large tap and die set to form. We wanted to see just how cheap you could get away with doing this sort of thing like we did with our permacoil, so we were able to install this with just a cutoff ended bolt with the same thread pitch, but be warned without a proper install tool for these, setting these lock taps down with just a hammer or hammer and punch can lead to this. So we bought the $20 install tool that works like this, fairly simple to finish the job, making the total $35 for this one. Here's the 6500 PSI test. Now from this you can expect an extra 9 to 10 thou increase with this grade 8 over the L19 tests in this stretching. So this one eventually stretched more than just 10 thou and let go. Watch it go. Mm. 
maxing out around 6400 psi we tried to break up the material around it to just see what happened but we're not really sure pulling out a 5 8 11 thread in cast iron should be pretty difficult i would think so 6400 psi the lowest so far i've used these things a ton for work we installed them into freshly machined aluminum fixtures to provide long lasting steel threads in place of having aluminum ones to just last longer and they always work very well this 6400 psi is actually about 140,000 psi tensile strength so near grade 8 bolt levels which means common grade 5 hardware like we used on those fixtures and like most vehicles use which is equivalent to class 8.8 .8, would actually strip out from torque or pulling tension well before the insert itself ever failed it ranking low in this group just goes to show how incredibly strong thread insert repairs are for the most part they exceed any of the bolts that you'll likely find yourself using when installed correctly never would have guessed that but what if a fancy ordered from a catalog planned out thread repairs aren't really your speed what if you just need it fixed today and all the auto parts store had was your trusty friend jb weld if you haven't done it maybe you're just lying or maybe you're just a certain age i feel like we all have been there so drilling out the threads until they are just basically all gone leaving the slightest spiral in there for the JB Weld to hold on to, slathering a bunch of the good stuff in there and waiting 24 hours. This isn't JB Quick, you know, for best results. And let's see what it can do. So grinding away the excess, then drilling a new hole with just the JB Weld left to tap threads into. It's not a natural feeling, very gummy, and the result is less than stellar looking, but surprisingly, feels pretty solid. This is the crossing your fingers portion of this process where you hope as you're tightening down the bolt it doesn't suddenly go loose on you. Let's see it. Okay, that curve was a bit high, but near 4,300 PSI. We were hoping for 1,000 PSI before it killed itself so that we could get a reading on the stretch. That's pretty damn good, I think. 4,282 PSI is about 94,000 PSI of comparable ultimate bolt tensile strength, which means you could max a grade two bolt that you find at your local hardware store, the ones that don't have any markings on the head, and well torque a grade five bolt pretty dang snug slash tight and be fine really. I'm not about to go so far as to say you should be pimping out your ride with JB Weld at this point, but the odd non-critical part just maybe some mounts, or maybe the last hole in a six bolt assembly. Eh, pretty happy with that. And there you have it, lots of surprises from us in this one. The ones we had the most experience with and also just heard and assumed were the best weren't quite as good as coil inserts, which are just 304 stainless, nothing crazy. I guess squishing those in between the bolt and the tapped hole really makes for a good bond. These lightweight, simple spring looking dealios that you can see through are able to perform right along with the strongest ARP hardware on the planet, and using name brand or spending more doesn't seem to correlate with better results from what we've seen. Happy days. Links below to what we had the most luck with. Appreciate you joining us for this one. Click subscribe to catch stuff like this at least every Friday. And thanks for watching.